Tonight, a Perth family's fire heartbreak, a charging iPad to blame as their Jaredale home goes up in flames. A man facing an attempted murder charge over a suburban smash south of Perth. Getting personal, the war of words between Labor MPs and Basil Zemplis heats up. Aged care operators warn residents will pay more as they unpack the major industry overhaul. Plus a giant leap for space tourism as a civilian spacewalks into history. And the WA firefighters turned calendar stars, putting a smile on the faces of sick kids. This is Nine News Perth with Michael Thompson. Good evening. A Jaredale family is without a home tonight after a fire ripped through their bedroom and quickly spread. The blaze sparked by something many of us use, an iPad left charging on a bedside table. This is all that's left of the iPad that's upended Jared and Java's lives. You kind of take it for granted, I guess. It's something you think is so normal and... It can do so much damage. Left on charge yesterday morning, it overheated, setting fire to the bed, then quickly spreading through their Jaredale home. It all seemed to go pretty quickly. It was sort of within about half an hour, everything was gone. Emergency services were called to the Jaredale Road property just after 1pm. The family's possessions gone, including their three-year-old little girl's toys and the beloved family cat also couldn't be saved. <laughs> The young couple and their daughter now left with nothing, but grateful their dogs survived the blaze. Come here, buddy. They thought they were being safe using only an Apple charger. Yeah, so it actually came with the iPad. Uh, it was only, say, a year old. But firefighters warn any device with lithium batteries can potentially start a fire. Tablets and mobile phones that most of us have and leave on charge. Don't leave anything on charge at all while you're not home know what you've put on charge and turn it off before you leave the house. And something we all do, leaving phones on charge in our bedrooms overnight, also discouraged. Well, I would say charge it in an area close to water. I charge my phone in the kitchen, so it's close to the sink. Lithium-ion battery fires are on the rise. So far this year, there have been more than 100 on track to beat last year's number at 109 and more than double the number in 2020. The young family's home now another statistic they never dreamed they'd be part of. It can happen so quickly. It's, it's pretty scary stuff. Yvonne Ardley, Nine News. A 28-year-old man has been charged with attempted murder, accused of smashing his car into a Parmelia home. Let's go live to Ezra Holt at police headquarters for us tonight. Ezra, a young woman was injured. Michael, the 19-year-old was inside the Gould Place home in Parmelia with friends on Sunday night when the car came crashing through. Police allege Daniel Jarris Bell was behind the wheel of this white Toyota Hilux and knew the people inside the home. Uh, police then launched a search for the 28-year-old after he allegedly fled the scene. He's since been arrested and faced court this morning from hospital under police guard. He's been charged with several offences, including attempted murder, assault and stealing. He'll front court again next week. Michael. Ezra, thank you. The political fight between the state government and Perth's Lord Mayor has ramped up and it's turning personal. The planning minister today jumping in to criticise Basil Zemplis just a day after he was labelled a B-grade Perth TV personality. He's the Labor backbencher pouring more fuel on a political fire. And that's that he's a phony. Oh, he's a he's a fraud. <laughs> Basil Zemplis doesn't even know his latest opponent. I have literally never heard right. of, the of, of the member. He has now. Mr Zemplis is a B-grade Perth TV personality, cosplaying as a politician. The Perth City Lord Mayor firing back after David Scaife lashed out at him in Parliament yesterday. Oh, they were strong words mm -hmm. and... I uh, found them very surprising and very unusual. Housing Minister John Carey and Basil Zemplis sharing the same 6PR microphone today, just half an hour apart. And for the second day running, the Labor Party targeting the Liberal candidate for Churchlands. I wouldn't give Basil Zemplis a B 
for closing a women's shelter in Perth, I'd give him an F alone. We're not talking about the Pope here. Basil Zemplis is not the Pope. The East Perth Primary School is at the centre of the feud after the state government overpowered the Perth Council to transform this car park by the end of the decade. If this was not designed just to stick it up the City of Perth ratepayers, show us the document that ranks the sites. It's not the only fight brewing. Hundreds of residents last night joined the Liberal Party, opposing plans for seven high-rise buildings at Floriot Forum. They're saying, we're against this development, we're against this development, we're against this development. Well, what are they doing about housing? With six months to go until the state election, there is still plenty more to be played out in this political fight between the state government and Lord Mayor. And the attacks are becoming more personal by the day. I'll be frank, Basil Zemplis has a glass jaw. Michael Stamp, Nine News. Banks and big telcos have agreed to a major crackdown on scammers who use bogus texts, fake videos and false claims. But there are already signs the federal government may have trouble convincing social media companies to cooperate. They're the scourge of modern life, invading your phone, your social media feed, sometimes your peace of mind. Scams pilfering $2.7 billion from Australian pockets every year. Every one of those dollars has got a tragic story behind it. The federal government to introduce tough new obligations on companies to combat shonks and shysters. New obligations on all of them to ensure that they're preventing, disrupting, reporting and taking the fight up to scammers. Under mandatory codes of conduct, banks will have to confirm the ID of payees before transferring funds. Telcos expected to step up protections against scam messages and calls and social media platforms required to verify advertisers. Failure would risk fines of up to $50 million. For the first time, real clarity about who is liable when a customer loses money. Banks backing the new complaints mechanism, saying it'll benefit scam victims. It is likely to see um, more reimbursement to customers. Scams are a really big issue for Australians. They're even a cost of living issue, ironically, because when you haven't got any money to spare, you, can't, you don't have any money to lose. But with more and more scams emanating from social media, the biggest challenge might be bringing the tech giants to heel. Billionaire Elon Musk using his platform X to call the Australian government fascists for its crackdown on misinformation. Elon Musk has had more positions on uh, free speech than the Kama Sutra. He is the uh, champion of free speech, and when he doesn't like it, he is, um, you know, he's going to shut it all down. Andrew Proben, Nine News. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese is heading overseas to join the leaders of the United States, India, and Japan for the fourth Quad Summit next week. The White House announcing today it will be hosted by Joe Biden in his hometown of Mr. Delaware uh, and focus on issues in the Indo-Pacific region, including security, natural disaster response and climate. A looming major shake-up of the aged care sector has many industry leaders concerned tonight. They fear an already stretched system could face more pressure if there's a rush to get in before prices increase. A once-in-a-generation overhaul of the aged care sector is underway, but some industry leaders are worried what it'll cost. One thing's for sure, uh, Australians will pay more for residential aged care in the future, uh, whether they can afford it or not. Lou Pascuzzi runs TLC Healthcare. He says residents are already money conscious and asking for reduced rates. One out of every three residents we're having to do that for now. The sector is floundering, with close to two-thirds of aged care operators running at a loss, and a new 574-page federal plan seeks to fix it, in part by means-testing Australians entering aged care, putting more of the cost burden on residents who can afford it. This is an incredibly important piece of work. National Senior CEO Chris Grice says with millions of people heading for residential care in the next two decades, the sector needs to be strong and wait times need to come down. Whatever can be done to make that happen, uh, that's a good outcome. For older Australians, though, there's a lot to think about fast. The clock is now ticking. Anyone receiving aged care before June 30 next year will be locked into the old and, for many, cheaper system. That leaves just over nine months to consider options because getting in before that deadline 
could mean saving thousands. I think there'll be an influx now. Anyone that was sort of thinking about whether they'd enter uh, residential aged care or whether they were ready to enter residential aged care, a significant number of people that will make that move now. Chris Kohler, Nine News. Donald Trump has ruled out facing off with Kamala Harris again and insists he won the first debate. But the vice president's performance was clearly well received, her campaign reeling in millions of donations after it aired. We had a monumental victory over comrade Kamala Harris in the presidential debate. Not backing down from declaring he won, but backing out of another round. Because we've done two debates and because they were successful, there will be no third debate. Kamala Harris. Just 48 hours ago, Harris and Trump met for the very first time, the prosecutor taking on the convicted felon. Tonight, President 45 declaring one and done. I'm not surprised that he wouldn't want to do another debate. I don't think there's much to be gained for him in another debate. I believe we owe it to the voters to have another debate. The 24 hours after the debate, a gold rush for the Harris campaign. Almost $70 million raised in the largest burst of funding for the vice president since she entered the race. And there's been a surge in people registering to vote. Vote.gov revealing some 400,000 people clicked on Taylor Swift's link after she endorsed Harris. The pop star turning things political again as she accepted the top gong at the Video Music Awards. The fact that this is a fan voted award and you voted for this. I, I appreciate it so much. And if you are over 18, please register to vote for something else that's very important for the presidential election. This election and what is at stake could not be more important. In the United States, Lauren Tamazi, Nine News. Vladimir Putin has warned the US and NATO they will be at war with the Kremlin if they provide long-range missiles to Ukraine. Comes as police probe the sudden death of a British journalist who had been banned from entering Russia. A Russian ship with Iranian missiles suspected on board as pressure grows on the West to gift the same to Ukraine. I'm going to take that discussion back. Uh, to Washington. But President Putin says, think twice. This will mean that NATO countries, the United States and European countries are fighting against Russia. And if this is so, we will make appropriate decisions based on the threats that will be created for us. The ominous threat comes as UK counter-terror police probe the sudden death of journalist David Knowles, who came to Russia's attention as host of the Ukraine The Latest podcast. Now, in the last week, we've seen the Russians... Um, Re returning. They're attacking again. They're Knowles was banned from Russia because of his work. Folks, I've got some bad news. Our beautiful, beautiful friend David Knowles died suddenly at the weekend after a health emergency. Oh, sorry, folks. And can I pay tribute to Telegraph journalist David Knowles, creator of the brilliant Ukraine The Latest podcast, who tragically died last weekend at the age of only 32. Meanwhile, three Red Cross workers have been killed and two others injured in a strike in eastern Ukraine. President Volodymyr Zelensky posting this photo, calling it another Russian war crime. In London, Hannah Sinclair, Nine News. We have grim figures tonight on the number of deadly drownings across WA. As Monica Koss explains, one gender is overwhelmingly represented in this year's Surf Life Saving Report. Michael, men made up the vast majority of drownings in WA for the 2023-2024 period. 90% of the 41 people who drowned were male, most aged between 40 and 69 years old. Nearly half the drowning deaths happened in coastal environments, those swimming, snorkelling and scuba diving accounting for a total 65%. Regional and remote areas which are harder to access and tend to have fewer resources recording 55% of coastal drownings, while 75% occurred more than one kilometre from a surf life-saving service. As tragic as these figures are, Tomo, they could have been a lot higher if it wasn't for Surf Life Saving Australia. The organisation estimates it performed nearly 2.5 million preventative actions across the country. 
Public sector workers have been offered a 12.5% pay rise alongside the option of a nine-day fortnight. The union was pushing for a four-day work week where employees would earn their full pay for working 80% of their hours. Instead, the state government's offering the nine-day fortnight without any reduction in hours. The offer will now be put to union members. Heroes on and off the job firefighters starring in this year's steamy calendar have seen firsthand how their fundraising is changing the lives of kids at Perth Children's Hospital. More than 500 children are admitted to PCH every year with burns, including Ruby, who suffered third degree burns as a four year old. The calendar this year for uh, 2025 will support the funds for, required for exploring the impact from a mental health perspective. Ultimately, it's about seeing young Ruby and other people in her situation and what sort of a, a difference we make to those, to those people and their lives. Since 2008, the calendar has raised almost $2 million for the Burns unit. The 2025 calendar officially launches in November. Well, we followed their success in Paris from our living rooms and today some got the chance to rub shoulders with them. Fans in Sydney buzzing with excitement to give our Olympic and Paralympic heroes a homecoming to remember. A record-breaking heist in Paris and today it was time to show off some of the loot. And guess what? That is a silver medal. Have you touched it yet? Yeah, I have. It's amazing. <laughs> Medals and memories. Did you just love those games? Oh, it was such a great five weeks away, yeah. I mean, it's good to be back, but I'm still, still missing that, those croissants in the morning. A nation had cheered from their lounge rooms. Today, it was time to get up close. Ready? Yep. One, two, three. Happy snaps with their heroes. How much fun is this? It's incredible. I'm speechless. I brought a tear to my eye. It was a sunny day in Sydney, a welcome home as we continue to bask in the glow of Paris gold. Could you feel it? Did you know that the whole country was behind you and cheering you on? I definitely felt it. I couldn't hear it from Australia, but I could hear it from my mum and my dad. There were so many highlights. Our water polo women, the Stingers, knocked over a superpower, the USA, on the way to winning silver. And with a mum and the team, they had a secret weapon. This is our number 14 player. She's our biggest, uh, biggest cheerleader, our biggest mascot. Our heroes are drawn from all over the country and it's an opportunity for the nation to say welcome home. Sydney today, Brisbane, Perth and Melbourne tomorrow, Adelaide, Darwin later next week. A victory lap to inspire the next generation of Olympians and it's a party that has only just begun. Do you want to be an Olympian? Oh, yes! Oh, yes, I do. I do. A hundred percent. What sport? Growing. 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 There you go. See you in 2032. <laughs> Damien Ryan, Nine News. Well, it was a picture-perfect Friday today. And Emma Griffiths, what a beautiful spring weather we are having. And better yet, Tomo, it isn't going anywhere. We started the day with a low of 11.8 degrees before climbing to a top of 28.4 just before 2 this afternoon. No surprises here. It was a beautiful day right across the suburbs today. In the city was the warmest place to be. Swanbourne, not far behind, 28.3. Jandicott also soaking up the sunshine, 28.2. To the charts and a high-pressure system in the bite will slowly track east East, directing moderate to fresh and gusty easterly winds across southern and central WA. But how is the weather shaping up for the all-important weekend, Tomo? I'll have all the details a little later. I've got a feeling it's going to be pretty good, <laughs> Emma. Thank you. Ahead on Nine News, traffic stopper. See the bizarre lengths this protester went to as anti-war demonstrations roll on in Melbourne. A view money can buy. What's behind this daring endeavour hundreds of kilometres above Earth? See the dramatic railroad collision as a train slams into a semi-truck sending debris flying. And the surprise link between chronic sinus infections and your mental health. An anti-war protester has concreted herself to a car in Melbourne, sparking fresh mayhem for peak hour commuters. The chaos came on the final day of a weapons expo with Victorian police labelling the protesters' behaviour as appalling. A protest set in concrete. A young woman attached to a car, her arm in a bag of cement. 
Morning peak hour traffic at a standstill as police worked to move the Subaru. Wrapped up before the power tools were called in. The woman then arrested. Led away in cuffs, defiant. Protesters again face to face with police, embracing a final day of disruption. Police searching dozens of people. At its height, a couple of hundred protesters joined a so-called zombie rave, calling for an end to the weapons convention. Attendees continually warned to remove their badges to avoid attention. <laughs> Despite the trouble, the Treasurer saying the government wants to bring the convention back in two years' time. We would be looking to see what we can do in terms of securing what I think has been a, uh, a, 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 a very substantial project. What's going on in land forces is not about defending Australia. Their interest is sucking as much public tax funds as they can to maximise their profits. The protest is promising they'll be back too. Penelope Leish, Nine News. Humankind has just taken a giant leap towards space tourism thanks to a starry-eyed tech billionaire. Jared Isaacman emerged from a SpaceX capsule to become the first civilian to spacewalk. Making history 740 kilometres above Earth. Back at home we all have a lot of work to do, but from here, Earth sure looks like a perfect world. A view not many get. Tech billionaire Jared Isaacman, the first civilian to spacewalk. Up, down, left and right are three. The 41-year-old financed this entire flight for an undisclosed sum. His venture into the vacuum was followed by SpaceX engineer Sarah Gillis. All right, stepping into test matrix one for single-handed mobility. Really cool to see one of our own out there. That's awesome. The astronauts were tethered to the capsule and held bars testing the newest spacewalk suit in 40 years, orbiting at speeds of 30,000 kilometres an hour. Forward back, I am in just in a bit of a roll. Their preparation involved breathing pure oxygen to prevent getting the bends. Each had about eight minutes in space, but it's critical time. They needed to test all the equipment, so this was like like a little successful glimpse of the future that we're building for ourselves. There is a crew of four on board this SpaceX Polaris Dawn mission, which has gone deeper into space than any since the Apollo program that landed man on the moon. You show the same. Nice job for everyone. Uh... And everyone at SpaceX who made it possible. Elon Musk uh, wants to send people to Mars. NASA says this is a giant leap. In the United States, Jonathan Kersley, Nine News. Israel has bombed a United Nations school in central Gaza, killing 18 people, including six aid workers. Around 12,000 people were sheltering there when it came under attack. UN Secretary General labelling it a dramatic violation of international humanitarian law. A fresh flow for Boeing with more than 30,000 workers voting to strike over contract negotiations. It's the first walkout in 16 years at the aviation company, which is already trying to repair its reputation after a series of safety issues and significant financial losses. A bad day at the office for this truck driver getting caught on train tracks while transporting a tank in the US state of South Carolina, a train smashing through the load and sending debris flying. Luckily, no one was hurt. Researchers have discovered a pesky sinus infection that just won't go away. It may be linked to your mental health. It could open up a new pathway for treatment of anxiety and depression. American researchers studied more than 5,500 patients who were suffering chronic sinusitis. It's an infection that lasts for 12 weeks or longer, where the spaces inside the nose and head become inflamed, causing headaches and breathing issues. The study published today found people battling the condition are more than four times more likely to have anxiety and two times more likely to have depression. Researchers found it goes the other way too. People with anxiety 
anxiety or depression have an increased risk of developing a long-running sinus infection. It's hoped by finding the link between the three conditions, new treatment options could be found too. In the news ahead, the force goes green. The electric cars now on the beat in our southwest. Plus, the world famous cathedral about to get its voice back. The do's and don'ts of at home blood pressure testing what you need to know. And Nicole Kidman's message of appreciation opening up on the death of her mother. An electric police car will now be on the beat in our southwest district. This is the new Kia EV, which began patrols with officers in Bunbury today. The car is capable of going from zero to 100 kilometres an hour in just five seconds. Electric vehicles are already being trialled by officers in the Road Policing Command and at Fremantle Police Station, so WA Police can learn more about the use of the emerging technology. The Western Bulldogs are trying to overturn a multi-million dollar payout they were forced to make to a child sex abuse survivor. This comes as fresh allegations emerge. Another man claiming he was also abused by a volunteer at the club in the 80s. Just when Adam Neal thought the painful ordeal was over, he's back in court facing a potential retrial. The Western Bulldogs have appealed the near $6 million payout. It was ordered to hand over to the 51-year-old for abuse he suffered as a 12-year-old in the 1980s. A jury found the Footscray Football Club was negligent and failed to protect the young football fan against Graham Hobbs, a volunteer steward who abused him for five years. The club is appealing on seven grounds, claiming the jury got it wrong. Its lawyers telling the court the red flags and countless warnings about Hobbs weren't enough for staff to believe he was a genuine threat. It wants Mr Neal to lose his payment or, at the very least, a retrial claiming the amount is too excessive. But the club could be facing even more damages with a second alleged victim, a man in his 50s, launching his own action in the Supreme Court. The Bulldogs say the club intends to defend the matter, noting it treats any allegation of this nature with the utmost seriousness. The new case still has a long way to go, with the trial likely not to be listed until the end of next year. But even still, its future hinges on the outcome of today's appeal. Mr Mr Neal's lawyer said given the Western Bulldogs' determination to defeat these claims, we have now restarted our search for other people who may know something about Hobbs. Amber Johnston, Nine News. More than five years after it was devastated by fire, Notre Dame has finally got its voice back. Eight bells have been returned to the French Cathedral ahead of its reopening in early December. It was hoped the 12th century structure would be restored before the Paris Olympics, but the scale and complexity of the project pushed out the completion date. Nicole Kippen has opened up on her mother's death. In a post on Instagram, she wrote... Every message we have received from those who loved and admired our mother has meant more to us than we will ever be able to express. Janelle Kidman passed away on Saturday, aged 84, after a long illness. Emmy Award-winning actor Ewan McGregor has earned his spot on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. McGregor, whose work includes playing Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi, was presented with the honour by his Star Wars co-star Hayden Christensen. My friend Ewan, I want to thank you for being the best Jedi Master that anyone could have ever hoped for. And, and you always had my back, and I thank you for that. And uh, I'm just so happy to get to be here with you right yeah. now. And, and it, it's been an honor and a thrill to get to work with you and, and swing a lightsaber with you, and more than all of it, call you my friend. Yeah. I love you, brother. I love you, too. His star close to the late Carrie Fishers, who played the part of Princess Leia in the Star Wars films. Health experts are urging those at risk of high blood pressure to do their own home readings, especially if they suffer from a condition called white coat syndrome. But there are some do's and don'ts when it comes to DIY monitoring. There are plenty of reasons to keep our blood pressure under control. Hypertension is one of the major risk factors for heart attack, stroke, heart failure kidney disease, eye disease and vascular disease. I confess my blood pressure runs high and that's why I have one of these home machines. 
but I've never checked if I'm using it the right way. Professor Michael Stowasser from Greenslope's private hospital is an expert with the latest advice. He first recommends sitting comfortably with your arms on a table and the cuff at heart height. You need about a centimetre above the elbow crease and the arrow in the middle of the elbow. I expect my reading to be a little high today. I suffer from white coat syndrome, an important reason to monitor at home. 180 on 89. White coat syndrome is the phenomenon by which blood pressure goes up when a patient goes to see a doctor. Relaxing is the key. Well, I often tell my patients, imagine you're watching a cow munching. A little better, but I'll keep trying at home. The professor also advises not to drink coffee or have a cigarette for 60 minutes before you measure your blood pressure and don't talk during the process. And taking a reading every day isn't necessary. If you could do about a week's worth of readings every couple of months or so, that's plenty, particularly the week leading up to seeing your doctor. These days, blood pressure machines range from basic devices to those with more features. When you get up to the high-tech ones, uh, two different patients, so you can have patient one, patient two. And instead of manually recording readings, some let you send stored information to your doctor directly. If you have health insurance, a rebate is possible. So I always recommend to people that they ring their health insurer. Some of them will have a dollar amount that they can spend every two years and others will get a percentage. The real value of home monitoring, getting the treatment you may or may not need. It's the best predictor of outcomes and it may mean you avoid over-medication. Bruce Page, Nine News. From treats to treatment, how you can slash the cost of pet care by 75% still to come this Friday. While looking further, a field can help save you big time. Plus, the major milestone as these endangered tortoises are released north of Perth. But first, Paddy Sweeney is here with sport and Paddy, a backflip could be on the cards for an AFL legend. That's right, Tomo. A month after saying he was done and dusted, one of the greatest ever could be back. Rising Sun is a dusty and dimmer reunion on the cards. Brisbane land in Toby territory bracing for a response. And a scorcher sets the record straight. Dark eyes, a bright future. There's growing speculation Dustin Martin and Damien Hardwick could reunite at Gold Coast, with the Suns confirming they've held talks with the three-time Premiership star about a move north. Considered one of the best to play the game, Martin called time on his decorated career only last month after 302 games. Meanwhile, Fremantle have the ability to sign Jack Martin as a delisted free agent after he was cut by Carlton. The 29-year-old has already had a medical at the club and he's eager to play on at a third club. Meanwhile, Josh Corbett, as you saw there, has retired after five games in purple in the past two years. He has retired due to an ongoing hip injury. Sticking with football now in Brisbane are on red alert ahead of tomorrow's semi-final with GWS, preparing for Toby Green to bounce back to his best. The Lions are out to tame the captain and book a spot in a preliminary final. In enemy territory, bracing for a Toby Green response after his coach called on the struggling skipper to lift. Toby Green's one of the best players in the competition when he's up and about, so we'll look to nullify his influence again like we did at the Gabba and, and earlier on in the year. Brisbane confident Jack Payne is ready to go despite the defender battling a knee injury. To see the work that he's put in to, to get himself right is really special to, I reckon, everyone, not only us as players but the footy club, so... We love having Payne out there and I'm sure he's going to bring his best tomorrow night. Tom Papley hopes his preliminary final preparation is less eventful than last week. Sporting a shiner thanks to his scuffle with Toby Green. That coming after a car crash before their blockbuster against the Giants. Yeah, my car's alright. Uh, his is a bit busted up but yeah, all OK. Hundreds of fans turning out to get a glimpse of their heroes. The captain, Callum Mills, was nowhere to be seen. Ruled out of next week with a hamstring strain. We've gotten around him. He's, he's uh, mentally um, tough and, um, yeah, hopefully he gets back. And Charlie Kerno with little reason to celebrate, going under the knife. I never thought you could probably have surgery from a few rolled ankles, so that was a bit of a shock. You know, you could probably go one or two ways and just to get my ankle back to the best position to play football, um, yeah, used to go under. The forward promising to be back in action in time for pre-season. Eagles AFLW coach Daisy Pearce has described Ella Roberts as a freakish talent. The midfielder dominating in the 11-point win over the Bulldogs, collecting 23 touches, 6 tackles and 8 clearances. But it was her ability to withstand pressure while kicking this goal that most impressed her coach. 
the skill execution is just freakish, but that composure piece and thinking her way through the moment was um, a good sign. The victory marks the best ever start to a season for West Coast women's team. Scorch's emerging star Maddie Dark has made her intentions clear in her bid to receive an Australian call-up. The 23-year-old is determined to make it big, even eyeing the position of one of the country's best cricketers. Young and ambitious, Maddie Dark wants to reach the top, the top of the Australian batting lineup. I've definitely got my eye on, on that spot. But it's currently occupied by the national captain. And Alyssa Healy's been a great role model for me over the years as well, but I think, like, for me, if I'm, as long as I'm improving as a keeper, as a batter and as a teammate, I hope that would take care of itself. Dark putting herself in contention to eventually become Healy's successor, playing a starring role in Australia A's series against India last month. And a well-deserved century for Maddie Dark. Rescuing her side in the four-day match, posting 105 not out, her second ton of the series, after hitting an unbeaten century and helping the Aussies to an eight-wicket win in the second ODI. Just got to appreciate when you are actually doing well, really sort of try to stop to smell the roses a little bit, and I think, yeah, it did prove a few things for myself about the level that I think I can play at. Her performances catching the eye of national selectors who reached out. There's a couple of us young keepers that are probably, yeah, coming through the ranks, so it's pretty competitive, um, but I think just the main sort of feedback is just keep trying to put yourself, um, put your name forward and just be ready when an opportunity does come. In the meantime, Dark's focus is on delivering for the Scorchers after falling short in the final last year. T20 is a game where you have to be really adaptable, so I just want to be able to um, put my name forward for a few positions within the batting lineup. Alexia Pesce, Nine News. Australia is on the verge of qualifying for the Davis Cup finals. Thanasi Kokonakis won a tenth singles rubber to help power the Aussies to a three-love victory over the Czech Republic. It's a different feeling uh, than playing for Australia than playing for yourself. So do it for these boys, do it for my family. And uh, yeah, having the, all the travelling Aussies come support is incredible. The Aussies are undefeated in the group stage and will now face world number three Carlos Alcaraz and his Spanish side on Sunday. Tomo, just repeating that top story, Dustin Martin potentially eyeing yes, a move to that's Gold a bombshell, Coast. isn't it? It is big. Uh, there had been a fair bit of rumours around yep. that, uh, earlier in the year, yes. but three flags, three Norm Smiths, four All-Australians yeah. and two best and fairest. He's one of the best I've ever seen. Oh, absolutely. And you, but you just felt like he'd had enough, so... Yeah. Maybe a fresh start and that surprise. sun up on the Gold Coast. Yeah, absolutely. Paddy, have a great weekend. Next, Australia's favourite supermarket reveal, plus the working from home windfall for Aussie workers. And Emma Griffiths, the spring sunshine is sticking around. Yes, Tomo, another warm one tomorrow. 27 degrees will be on top, but how long will this sunshine stay? I'll have all the details very soon. Trust in Australian supermarkets has been shattered this year, while Bunnings remains the people's favourite. Here's Friday Finance with Chris Kohler. This time last year, Woolworths and Coles were the top two most trusted Australian brands, according to Roy Morgan Research. This year, they're down the bottom. These are Australia's least trusted brands. Optus still in the bottom spot, with Qantas and Meta close behind, but the big supermarkets are now nipping at their heels. And this is the other end of the scale, our most trusted brands. Bunnings at the top, followed by Aldi and Kmart. So still dominated by big retailers, but not the supermarkets anymore. Trust is important for customers, but profits are the main thing when it comes to shareholders, and it was a positive day on the market today. A rebound by the miners really making that possible. And the Australian dollar heads into the weekend buying 67 US cents and 60 euro cents. Finally, further afield, the European Central Bank cut interest rates last night, and the US Federal Reserve is expected to do the same thing next week. But the latest comments from the RBA show it's still a while away from doing that here. Thank you, Chris. Let's take a look at the price of unleaded petrol across Perth tomorrow. The average will be $1.66.5 a litre. And you can find it cheaper on Montana Crescent in Alcamos, on Great Eastern Highway in Ascot, and on Cumberland Road in Forestfield. Well, working from home has saved households more than $85 billion, painting a grim picture for those trying to get workers back in the office. New figures show spending on public transport was down in lockdown years, along with a drop in costs for running personal vehicles. Households have either put the windfall into savings or spent it on retail. 
The rising cost of living doesn't stop at the doggy door, with our pets costing more and more to take care of. Australians are now being urged to look further afield to avoid paying top dollar for everything from food and treatments to insurance. We saw pet ownership spike during COVID, but now it's the cost of owning a pet that's rising. It's certainly an extra expense that you um, have to factor in. Now Compare the Markets uncovered some wacko price differences, including this popular dog treat, just $5 at pet stock compared to $24 from Coles. Five times more expensive, one retailer versus another, that's really significant. And the disparities don't end there. This bulk buy dry cat food costing $50 at Big W is almost double that at Woolworths. Clumping cat litter products range from just over 80 cents to as much as $2.60 per kilo, depending on where you shop. While puppy pads are four times cheaper at Kmart and Bunnings compared to a dedicated pet store, proving it can pay to look outside the box for other budget players. We bulk buy food, so large bags. It's some of the online stores, um, if you do a subscription service, you get an extra discount. Don't just think, oh, supermarket trolley, yeah, let's load it in. There might be some really big savings over the year that you could add up just by stretching those eyes a little further. When it comes to flea and worming, instead of buying an all-in-one treatment, purchasing them separately could actually save you around $9 if you use the products monthly. It all does really add up. Especially extra costs like pet insurance, with the least and most expensive quotes for a domestic short hair cat having a $42 per month discrepancy, while the cheapest policy for a Staffordshire Bull Terrier was almost three times more affordable than the dearest, which could make over a $1,000 difference in a year. Often we set and forget when it comes to it, so um, th th there is a real potential to recoup some cost. Kate Lamb, Nine News. 20 endangered tortoises have been released north of Perth in a bid to boost their critically low numbers. The western swamp tortoises, aged between 2 and 13, were born and raised at Perth and Adelaide zoos and will now call Moore River home. The animals are going to be radio tracked, so it was quite important that we select uh, the right sized animals so that they're big enough to have a transmitter attached. So we released uh, 400 anim over 400 animals here since uh, 2007 and um, they s that seems to be really successful in establishing a uh, stable population here. The species was thought to be extinct for 100 years before being rediscovered in the Swan Valley in 1953. Picture perfect weekend weather ahead. Emma Griffiths has your full forecast right after this break. Welcome back. A lovely and warm spring day today and there's more where that came from. After an overnight low of 12 degrees, we climbed to a top of 28 just before 2 this afternoon. Right now it is still sitting at around 22 degrees. To the charts and a high pressure system in the bite will slowly track east, directing moderate to fresh and gusty westerly winds across southern and central WA. Across the country tomorrow, partly cloudy in Brisbane, mostly sunny in Sydney, Melbourne. We'll see some showers and becoming windy there. Just 12 degrees will be the top and 17 for Adelaide. Back in the north of our state, Kununurra is set to hit a hot 36 tomorrow and broom 37 degrees. Partly cloudy in Port Hedland, Karratha and Marble Bar and sunshine for Meekathara. Further south, 30 degrees will be the top in Geraldton, Bunbury, sunny and 23, cloud clearing in Augusta, a possible shower for Albany, Kalgoorlie, sunshine and 24 degrees. On the waters, winds east to southeasterly, 15 to 20 knots, decreasing to 10 to 15 knots for a period in the afternoon. Seas around a metre and swell southwesterly, one to two metres, decreasing to between one and one and a half metres during the afternoon. Wind for a mild night in Perth tonight, 13 degrees will be our expected low. Tomorrow we're looking at nothing but blue skies to start the weekend and it's going to be warm as well, up to 27 degrees. Winds will be easterly, 20 to 30 kilometres an hour, then they're set to increase into the late evening. Looking ahead and nothing but 
Sunshine 25 will be our top on Sunday after an overnight low of 13. The sunny skies will continue on Monday and Tuesday, another warm one in 27. Cooling off a touch by Wednesday and Thursday, 23 degrees will be our maximum there, but still not a drop of rain in sight. While minimum temperatures will range from about 10 to 13 degrees over the course of the week. So Tomo, some more stunning weather to come. I mean, just take a look at that seven day forecast. A week <laughs> of sunshine, it looks magnificent. Emma, thank you. That is nine news for this Friday. September 13, The Current Affair is next with Ali Langdon. From all of the team here at Nine, enjoy your weekend. Good night.